What's up everyone? My name is Cody Engel, and in this video we are going to talk about the run scope function. So in our previous video in this series we were talking about the let scope function. So if you haven't seen that yet I would recommend going back and checking it out just because we created this fictional person with this address data class and we're going to use this in all of our other scope function videos. We also have a couple other ones. So we have like Homer here and Marge down here, which I'm going to use in, well, this video. So with that, let's go ahead. We'll get this set up. We'll create a new file. We'll call it run and then we'll create our main function. I'll minimize this. I'll zoom in on main. And then over here, we'll go back to our let class. And I'm just going to copy Homer again. Uh, just to save save some time on this video. We'll paste that over here. So we have our fictional person, first name, last name, age, address, all of that good stuff. And we'll do our print line just for Homer, just so we can see does this run in the way that we expect it to, which it should. Of course it does. So cool, we're all good to get started. So the run scope function is similar to the let scope function. It just changes on the object that is being referenced within the scope function itself. It's okay if that was confusing. That is why this video exists. So uh, we'll just get started by having our uh, run scope function. So we have Homer dot run and then this so the this reference is the fictional person. So we could say if we want to change the address, we can say equals or address dot uh, state equals Illinois and then zip code or sorry, address dot zip code equals 62629. So we're changing the address, instead of being located in Oregon, it's located in Illinois. The thing that you'll notice that's different from the let scope function is we're able to just reference, well, in this case, we're referencing address like this. Uh, but the the inner scope is, is this. So that's why we don't have to say homer.address. Although, if we want to save on typing, we can do that as well. So we have homer.address run, and then we're just changing the state to Illinois, the zip code to that. And then we do print line again, uh, just Homer. We run our function, and then we can see right here, we have Homer Simpson, and then the address has been changed from Oregon to Illinois with the zip code changing correctly as well. So similar to the let scope function, let's go ahead and see what the return value is for run. So if we do print line and then do returned, if you uh, want to guess, feel free to leave a comment below. We'll go ahead and run now. And just like the let scope function, run also will return unit. So it returns the last ex or the last statement that was ran. In that case, since we were just setting the zip code, the statement is going to be um, unit because there's there's nothing meaningful to return again though just like with um, the let scope function we can return this within the run and then if we go ahead we run it we can see here the address 742 is what is being returned there alternatively you could say homer that'll return the same value there again though if your whole point is you just want to return the object reference back, there are other scope functions that uh, are a bit more applicable in that circumstance. So let's move on to nullability just because that's kind of the main spot where you will see like the run and let scope functions really kind of show up. And so similar to our let uh, code, we're just going to bring in Marge which is a nullable fictional person. And then over here, we will say you know, our print line, Marge, just so we can see what that's equal to. And then if we want to do Marge uh, dot run. And so in this case, similar to the last one, we will update her address to be Homer's address just because they live together. It would be weird if Homer moved and Marge didn't. 
and then we can also do like has Twitter equals we'll say true gender female and then occupation I think Marge is still just a housewife and we'll do our print line here just to say this is what Marge is so if we go ahead we run this we should see that these updates happen because Marge is not null and so over here we see Marge the Illinois change happened the gender has Facebook we have uh, false and then true all of that ended up being good cool and then similar to the let scope function we can if say Marge is null we can have some default and we can just do print line whoops Marge was null now if we run it since Marge isn't null in this case nothing happens we don't have this printed out and then likewise if we do this one to be marge equals null and then we run the code we will see whoops marge was null so again if this code on the left hand side or this statement is null then run isn't executed and instead what's on the right hand side of the Elvis operator gets ran so we we print line that usually again this kind of is helpful if you are not expecting something to be null but it technically could be null and if it is you want to log that out into some other platform you just want to record that or maybe you want to I mean you can do something as wild as throw an exception and crash the application. I had to comment that out just because Kotlin is smart enough to know that this throw will always happen because we are immediately setting marge equals to null or equal to null. So kind of the difference between the let scope function and the run scope function. The run scope function is used when the uh, object that you're referencing within the function, you want it to be th this. So this dot address Whereas with the let scope function, it's when you don't want it to be this. So when you want it to be it instead, the return value is still the same as what it is with the let scope function. So this will return a unit or whatever the last uh, statement was. And yeah, I, that's really about it. Anyway, with that, Thank you so much for watching. I will catch you in the next one. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to, you know, know when the next one is coming up. Otherwise, uh, I will catch you in the next one.